Hello and welcome to our presentation on arts and health, new approaches to arts and robots in healthcare. Some context before we start. Our interdisciplinary research group consists of Damoth Herreth, an engineer and roboticist, Jennifer McFarlane, the art curator at Canberra Health Services in the Australian Capital Territory in Australia, Elizabeth Yoakum, arts and robotics specialist, Janie Busby-Grand, a research psychologist focusing on cognition, and Patrick Tressé, a renowned Brussels-based French artist. So what do we know about the intersection of robots, art and health to date? Well, we know from previous research and a very long history of clinical experience that engaging with art, whether it be creation of art, music therapy, dance, various forms of digital art therapy and a wide range of other activities, all of these processes can facilitate or directly support healing and recovery from illness. We also know from recent research that social robotic interventions that focus on providing that interpersonal connection may be able to have a role in healthcare but we need more evidence on this front. Here we wanted to look at how these factors might work together to enhance well-being in a healthcare context by focusing on robotic art. Robotic art outside of a therapeutic context has substantial history and includes robots that make art, robots as works of art, and robotic performances. Only a small number of studies to date have explored robotic art within the healing and recovery process. What we wanted to see is whether a robotic art installation, in this case work by Patrick, incorporated into a Hopped Hospital setting would be perceived as a positive experience, one that would improve the quality of life for for patients, caregivers and staff. One thing that's important here is that the focus was on a receptive context where the patient is not actively engaged in the art making process. This is particularly important for hospital-based rehabilitation settings where patients experience hospital stays to be emotionally and physically exhausting, leaving little energy available for more active experiences with the arts, such as painting and music making. As such, this study provides insight into a potentially valuable and highly accessible intervention for hospital settings. Robot Named Paul is an interactive robotic artwork designed by Patrick. The robot takes a picture of a seated visitor and using computer programming draws that person's portrait using ink pen and line drawing hatching techniques. The drawings are abstracted but recognisable renderings of the participant. The exhibit works by seating a participant in front of the installation, the artist turns the robot on and the interactive camera looks up at the participant, the robot arm then begins sketching. And throughout the drawing process, the camera regularly looks at the drawing as well as the participant. These expressive gestures really give the person a sense of engagement, like they're included in the art making process. In this way, the drawing robot is less of a fixed artwork and more like a performance event that places the participant at the centre of the experience. Working with a rehabilitation hospital on a university campus, we set up the robot installation in the foyer of the hospital and patients, carers and visitors could all take part. So this setup was a high visibility, high traffic area. You could see it from the main entrance and watch it in process from the hospital cafe and many people chose to do so. We ran this for three consecutive days with 20 minute time slots available during each afternoon. Participants signed up in advance for a time slot through the staff and it was extremely popular among patients. Participants completed consent forms and then sat for around 15 minutes for the portrait with the robot. What was really useful with this particular design is that the participants in wheelchairs could easily take part. People could leave easily if they wished to. And during the sitting, there was a lot of interaction between the participant and the artist and the researchers and the other patients. So it was a very, very social experience. When they were finished, the robots became part of a collab, the portraits became part of the collaborative exhibit. And then after three days, at the end of the exhibit, were given to the participants themselves. So we wanted to understand if participants enjoyed it. Did it make the hospital a better place to be? And also more broadly, we asked how they perceived therapeutic social robots in the hospital setting. We asked these questions in a short online survey after they'd finished sitting for the portrait. 27 people took part in the exhibit and 17 completed the survey. We also completed three interviews in the three weeks after the exhibit to gain more insight into the experience of the patients. So what did we find? Well, the exhibit gave patients a really positive experience in their time in hospital. 
100% said it provided a talking point with others, which is really important in this kind of long-stay hospital setting. 88% enjoyed it and said it gave them something to do. Around half said it made them feel cared for and made them feel more positive about the hospital. Now, while this response is certainly not universal, the fact that such a brief intervention could accept their perception of their surroundings is notable and was supported by the interview comments which focused on the salience of the event in the otherwise sterile healthcare setting and the added interest of the robotic aspect of the work. Most participants attributed joy to be the single most important quality attached to the experience, which is directly related to quality of life and well-being. Particularly telling is one interview answer which highlights the patient's desire to be cared for holistically, physically, emotionally and psychologically during a hospital stay. The intervention positively addressed these concerns about that broader sense of individual well-being. We would like to argue that the interactive art installation's most substantial intervention was the act of being seen. The hospital environment is host to many clinical machines that see into hidden parts of the body that have failed, are imperfect and might be fixed. These machines image what is wrong, not what is right. The drawing robot offered a space for the patients to be seen as a person, not a pathologised body. We see this in the responses given in the post-event interviews, which reflect a post-focus on personhood, which is so often lost in institutionalised settings. Answers to questions about the role of robots in healthcare settings suggested people were comfortable with robots as potential therapeutic tools, but weren't as clear when it came to their potential in direct patient care. Informally, the project received substantial positive feedback, with patients, visitors and staff all stopping frequently to look at the installation and showing great interest in the processes and the artwork. One doctor stopped to say that the project had turned the hospital into a community. The finding that the positive outcomes are apparent with a receptive interactive art installation such as this is promising for the development of therapies with patients who have substantial physical impairment and suggests that further research is warranted with other forms of receptive art interventions. The drawing robot has been successfully exhibited at a range of international galleries, museums and festivals. The artist attributes the international acceptance and success to its ability to appeal to a wider audience. As Patrick argues, the thing about this artwork is that it's for everybody. It works on every type of person across age and class. When I exhibit this work in galleries, everyone from the curators to the cleaners to security guards and children, it's accessible to everyone. Anecdotally, this was true for the current installation as well. We believe accessibility to be one of the most important elements to be considered in a robotic art intervention. There is growing interest in using social robots in care settings and therapeutic contexts to provide companionship, motivation and diversionary activities. At the same time, the use of medical robots for diagnosis and surgery is also on the rise and patients and their families have anxieties about being treated with robots. This interactive artwork provides another context for meeting and interacting with robots in a way that makes robot technologies more approachable and less fearful. As our findings indicate, there is tremendous potential in creative interventions that do not aim at traditional therapy or rehabilitation, but render machines and interactions with machines less scary and more familiar, possibly reducing anxiety for patients and their family members and providing a meaningful site for dialogue about these concerns.